Sometimes as a professional athlete, it's easy to get caught up in the moment, take things way too far, and wind up landing yourself in some serious trouble. Now you have to admit, players from the NFL, NBA, and even the MLB may be more known for making headlines and ending up on the other side of bars, but the NHL has seen its fair share of players getting arrested as well. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the 10 most embarrassing NHL player arrests. Dustin Bufflin. This may be the most known arrest on the list, so let's get it out of the way now. Approaching the end of the 2011 offseason, Winnipeg Jets defenseman Dustin Bufflin was arrested for boating while intoxicated on a lake in Minnesota. Drinking while operating a vehicle is ridiculously stupid, but the most embarrassing part of this entire incident was Bufflin's physical state at the time of his arrest. He was already known as a big man in the league, but when he was arrested, he weighed in at almost 290 pounds. That was 40 pounds over what he weighed during the previous season he had just played. And oddly enough, that's what people went on to talk about for years to come. Not the DUI, but the insane weight gain as this pitcher made its rounds. I actually miss Buff in the league. He was fun to watch and his decision to step away from the NHL after the 2018-2019 season really left a hole in the Jets lineup that they're still feeling today. Chris Nyland. Known as an enforcer during his 13 year career in the NHL, Chris's nickname was actually Knuckles. Chris ran into some problems years after retiring from hockey. In 2009, Nyland wasn't using his hands to rough up people on the ice, he was actually using them to shoplift at a shopping mall in Boston. Yep, that's right, a man who once earned millions throughout his time in the NHL was caught for shoplifting. What was he trying to steal? Swim shorts. Reportedly, Chris took three pairs of swim trunks into the change room, but only left with two as he returned them to the store employee. Now you might be asking, where was that third set of swim trunks? Well, they were nestled up against Chris's junk. That's where they were. He wore them under his pants out of the store, but the security guards confronted him about it and Chris actually reverted back to his enforcer ways, trying to throw a punch at security. He was eventually detained by police and later said, I just wanted to save a few bucks. Kevin Stevens. Playing in the league from 87 through to 2002, Kevin Stevens was part of some great teams during his time in the NHL and has two cups to show for it with the Pittsburgh Penguins. At the end of the 90s, Stevens made his way to New York to play for the Rangers for a few seasons and in the year 2000, Stevens got caught partying a little too hard. After a win against the St. Louis Blues, Stevens went back to a motel in Illinois. And what pairs nicely with a dumpy motel room? That's right, you guessed it, a lady of the night and several grams of crack cocaine. At the time, Stevens was a married man with two children and a third one on the way, so that makes this way worse. The cops busted in and Kevin Stevens was forced to enter the NHL's substance abuse program. Mike Richards Two-time Stanley Cup champion Mike Richards was busted at the border for attempting to take oxycodone across to Canada. The RCMP charged him with possession of a controlled substance and the LA Kings later terminated his contract for what they called a material break of the requirements of his contract. Richards had five years remaining on his contract with the Kings worth $22 million. The following season, the Washington Capitals tried to take him on thinking they were adding some depth and a player who knows how to win. But his regular season stats with the Caps was embarrassing with just five points in 39 games played. And in the postseason, where they really hoped he'd help the team push through to the cup finals, Richards tallied a miserable zero points in 12 playoff games played. Bob Probert. Easily the scariest man to ever play in the NHL, but as we discovered, Bob Probert struggled with substance abuse issues throughout his career. And in 1989, he was arrested for attempting to cross the Canada-US border with 14.3 grams of cocaine in his underwear. Now I've never done cocaine, but that seems like a lot to be stuffing down your pants hoping no one notices. To make matters worse, the initial reason why Probert was stopped by the border police was because his vehicle was littered with empty alcohol containers and on top of that, his travel documents were expired. Probert focused way too much on smuggling the cocaine and not enough on literally everything else that was wrong. Dino Cicerelli. Now this one is quite different from the others on the list. Dino Cicerelli was in the comfort of his own home and when in the comfort of his own home, Dino liked to get, uh, let's call it comfortable. Okay, okay, I'll just say it. The man liked to walk around nude with it all hanging out. 
One day, Dino claims he had heard some noise coming from his garage, so he went outside to check, and of course, why would he put any clothes on to do that? It's a free world and this is my property, I'll do whatever I want. Well, Dino was arrested for indecent exposure because of it, so I bet he's thinking twice now about running outside to check on the garage. Steve Durbano, spending just six seasons in the NHL throughout the 70s, Steve Durbano averaged 5.1 penalty minutes a game, which is the highest mark of any skater with over 1,000 penalty minutes. Steve wasn't just getting in trouble on the ice, but was often getting mixed up in some illegal extracurriculars outside of hockey as well. He would often get himself into bar fights during the time he was playing in the NHL, and in 1983, Steve Durbano was charged after trying to smuggle half a million dollars worth of cocaine into Canada. I wonder if he pulled the probert and shoved it all down his pants. However, that's not the worst crime Durbano committed. In 1998, he was arrested for running a prostitution ring and was actually busted by an undercover cop who baited him into discussing the details of the services they offer. Patrick Kane now this is an incident that at the time seemed like it was going to ruin Patrick Kane's career. In August of 2009, Kane was charged with robbery and punching a cab driver in Buffalo over what turned out to be less than a dollar. Kane was in the cab with his cousin and apparently the driver did not have 20 cents to give back for their change on a $15 cab ride. Both Kane and his cousin punched the driver in the face, grabbed his throat, and broke his glasses in the attack. On top of that, they took back their $15 and fled the scene, but were eventually apprehended at 5 a.m. the next morning. Ed Belfour Now a Hall of Fame goalie, but back on March 8th in 2000, Belfour got mixed in with some bizarre drunken events that ended with him being detained by the police. It's no secret that Ed likes his booze, but on March 8th, he took things to another level. Belfour checked into a nice upscale hotel with a woman, but being as drunk as he was, the woman who was accompanying him became frightened as it's been said that Belfour was loud and belligerent. So she called hotel security to help her out. The security escorted her to a cab and then confronted Belfour about the incident. Well, obviously drunk and out of his mind, Ed slammed the guard against the wall and put him in a headlock. It didn't end there. He literally wrestled with the guard all the way up until the police came and were forced to pepper spray him as he would not stop resisting. It gets worse. Belfour puked on his chest during all this and began to spit on the cops while wildly kicking at them like a child pulling a temper tantrum. Belfour did try to bribe the cops so they didn't take him to prison, but the number he threw out was just way too high. Belfour offered them $1 billion. I mean, if it was realistic, maybe they would have taken it. Claude Giroux. Celebrating Canada Day as a Canadian is certainly always a good excuse to drop everything and party the whole day, and that's exactly what Claude Giroux did in 2014. Obviously having a few too many while he was visiting Ottawa, Giroux got a little too handsy. Yep, that's right, he grabbed the behind of an officer, and not just any officer, a male officer. That has to be the most embarrassing way to get arrested. Clearly getting too comfortable and thinking he can get away with anything, he grabbed the butt cheek of a police officer in broad daylight. Giroux wasn't formally charged with anything, but he did spend the night in jail. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next video.